so now let's move on. We've seen now two cases where we had some combinatorial optimization problem. In one case, it was exactly captured by an LP. In one case, it was exactly captured by an integer linear program. And we relax it to a linear program. And then, ta-da, something very nice happened. We found out that the linear program was not much of a relaxation at all. And in fact, it still essentially captured the original problem. Now we're going to talk about the minimum vertex cover problem. And uh, it's going to be an example where um, you know, taking the integer linear program and relaxing it to a linear program, it will not be exact anymore. The linear program will not give us an exact solution. But still, you know, as I suggested, linear program is so great. Like, you should just, you should just do it anyway as much as you can. And perhaps uh, relaxing to a linear program will help you anyway. And we'll see that uh, it will. OK, so the vertex cover problem, I imagine you've seen it before. We're going to talk about a slight generalization here uh, from the version you might know, where uh, it's like a weighted vertex cover problem. So what does that mean? So the input is going to be a graph, a regular, a, a usual graph, an undirected graph. But now the vertices are going to have costs. For every vertex v, it's going to have, part of the input is going to be a cost, c sub v, which is non-negative. And what are you trying to do? You're trying to output a so-called vertex cover. A vertex cover is like a very confusingly named object. Whoever named it in the theory of combinatorics maybe did a weird job of it. A vertex cover is a subset of vertices S that touch all the edges. So it's kind of like these vertices form a cover of the edges. Okay, so you just got to get used to that. Vertex cover is a set of vertices uh, that touch all the edges. And your goal, as you might guess, is to Minimize the total cost of the vertices you selected. Um, so I don't know, maybe like you have the graph and um, here's an example. The edges are like roads and you can put like a monitoring station at each endpoint. And like you want that every road is monitored by one of its endpoints and like differing monitoring locations have different costs to install. And so you want to install the cheapest cost set of monitoring stations, which are vertices, such that every road has one of its two uh, endpoints um, with a monitor. OK, so I've given a little example here where the graph is a star. And the, the central node has cost 2, and the leaf nodes have cost 1. And I hope you can see uh, what the minimum cost vertex cover is here. Uh, for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the optimum here is two. You should select the center vertex, and that touches all the edges, so that's great. And uh, the total cost is two. Um, on the other hand, this is an example graph which um, might fool the first polynomial time algorithm you might, or polynomial time heuristic you might think of. The first polynomial time algorithm you might think of is a greedy algorithm, where maybe you just choose the cheapest cost vertex and buy it, and it covers some edges. And then uh, once some edges are covered, you don't have to ever consider buying their endpoints. So then just buy the, the next cheapest vertex that covers an edge uh, that hasn't been covered, buy the next cheapest vertex that covers an edge that hasn't been covered, and so forth. That's a simple heuristic. It's not very good at this problem, because this algorithm, uh, this heuristic on this graph will give you a solution of six. You'll buy one vertex, and you'll just cover one edge, and then you'll have to buy you buy the next cheapest vertex, which is still a 1, it covers this edge. And you'll end up buying all the leaf edge vertices, which is 6, when you should have just you know, um, ponying up for the center vertex and paid 2. And in general, this shows that like, this natural greedy algorithm can be terrible. If you generalize this to a star with n vertices, then the optimum value is 2, but the greedy algorithm would pay close to n, n minus 1. Um, well, it's maybe not such a fault of the, the greedy algorithm, because this problem is NP-hard, as you well know. Even in the unweighted case, where all the vertices have uh, cost 1, it's NP-hard. So you know, there's nothing you can do if you're trying to find a polynomial time algorithm that solves this exactly. In particular, this implies uh, you shouldn't hope that if you're, you know, one thing we're going to do is formulate this as an integer linear program. We're going to relax it to a linear program. We're going like, to solve the linear program. You shouldn't hope for the last case where like, oh, I hope the linear program will just luckily give us an integer solution, which is also optimal, because then you'd be solving an NP-hard problem in polynomial time, which it ain't going to happen. Um, but you should do it anyway. So let's see what happens when we do this recipe. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, let's formulate an integer linear program for the min cost vertex cover problem. And uh, similar to before, we're gonna have a variable x sub v for each vertex. And in the integer linear program, we'll constrain it to be either zero and one. And the intent is that x v should be set to one if you're gonna buy that vertex and zero if you're not gonna buy it. And we have constraints, and we have to constrain this, your choices so that you form a vertex cover, which really means for every edge u v, you take at least one of its endpoints. Okay, and this constraint, this linear constraint, uh, enforces that for every edge uv that you choose at least one of the endpoints. You're allowed to choose both. And we have this simple objective function, the sum over all vertices of 0, 1, xv for whether or not you chose it times the cost of that vertex. So again, this integer linear program exactly captures the min weight vertex cover problem, uh, min cost vertex cover problem. And if you already know that's NP hard, this gives you a proof that integer linear programming, solving them to optimality, is also NP hard. Uh, okay, but well, we're going to do what we did before. We're going to quote unquote relax this, and that means forming the, the linear program that has the same variables and the same uh, constraints and objective, except that we relax this uh, constraint that xv should be either 0 or 1 to just the constraint that xv should be between 0 and 1. So again, you can think of it as like in the LP, you're allowed to like fractionally take vertices to the, some extent between 0 and 1, and for every edge, you like sum up the extent fractionally to which you took its endpoints, that should be at least one. So that's a different problem. It's not the real problem. It's some relaxation of the problem. But the, this relaxation of the problem is uh, exactly capturable by a linear program. <coughs> Excuse me. And therefore, you can solve it uh, and find the optimal solution in polynomial time. Now, uh, here we have a minimization problem, right? So in the LP, you're trying to minimize something and you have, uh, you're allowed to minimize over a whole polytope rather than just the integer points inside the polytope. So here we have the situation where the LP opt will be always less than or equal to the true opt. Um, and sometimes it might be strictly less than the true opt. And here's a very simple example. Let's say you have this triangle graph where each vertex has uh, cost one. Well, the optimum solution has cost two. If you only take one vertex, then you know, the opposing edge will not be covered uh, by either of the endpoints. So you have to take at least two vertices, so the optimum cost is two. On the other hand, it's easy to check that the LP optimum, the cost of the L optimal LP solution is at most three halves, 1.5. And the reason for that is you can just put XV equals a half on every single vertex. And in fact, you can do this strategy of put half for xv on every single vertex for any graph at all. And you'll see that it will always satisfy the constraints because every edge will be half covered by one vertex and half covered by the other vertex. Um, and it'll achieve a value which is a half the sum of all the costs. Okay, and in this special case, it'll achieve the value three halves. And it's very easy to show that actually the LP optimum is exactly three halves in this case. But anyway, it's at most three halves. And this shows that there's some kind of uh, gap. I mean, the LP optimum is strictly better than the actual optimum. And uh, for a more general example like this, um, we could consider G being the complete graph, Kn. And here I claim the true optimum vertex cover cost is n minus 2. And the reasoning is the same. In a complete graph with n vertices, you know, you can keep buying vertices. And um, if you've bought even if you bought n minus three vertices, uh, oh wait, this op should be n minus one. Sorry, this is a little typo. Maybe make this a one. Um, it's n minus one because if you've bought, uh, let's say you bought n minus two of the vertices, well, there's still two unbought vertices and it's the complete graph. And so they have an edge between them. Uh, which you haven't covered yet. So the optimum is n minus uh, one. Once you buy n minus one vertices, you've covered every edge. Uh, yeah, I'll get back. I got a PowerPoint advice from the PowerPoint guru here. Uh, I'll ask you at the end uh, the issue I have. One issue is I'm doing this not in standard presenter mode, but in windowed mode. Anyway, enough PowerPoint talk. Uh, Right, so uh, for this complete graph, you can again assign every vertex a half, and so the LP optimum value will be n over two which is much less than n minus two on one hand. On the other hand, you might think it's not so bad because it's only half of the optimum. It's within a factor two of the optimum. And uh, as I said before, one merit of doing this is at least this LP opt that you can compute efficiently in polynomial time 
uh, serves an efficiently computable lower bound on the optimum. So, you know, if you manage to find an integral solution that's close to the LP opt, you can be like, oh, I'm, I'm doing a pretty good job here. Uh, okay. So now I want to tell you about a concept called LP rounding. And it's, a, it's not a specific concept. It's more of an idea for a concept. The idea is uh, an algorithmic idea of taking an optimal so-called fractional solution, the optimal solution to the LP, and somehow trying to convert it or quote unquote round it to a feasible integer linear programming solution, which is somehow almost as good. So this is the idea between LP, uh, behind LP rounding. Solve your LP, get a feasible fractional solution that achieves some value, and then try to somehow convert it to an integer solution, which is feasible, whose value is close. Uh, OK, so for example, let's try to do this in our uh, vertex cover case. Let's say x tilde is some feasible solution for the min vertex cover LP for a graph G. OK, it doesn't even have to be an optimal solution. We're going to apply this reasoning to an optimal solution. But for what I'm about to say, it can just be a feasible solution, a feasible linear programming solution. And now I want to imagine getting an integer solution. And one way I can do this is define the set of vertices S, or for full notation, S sub X tilde, to be all those vertices V, where the fractional solution gives an extent that's at least a half. And so for every X tilde, I can cook up a set of vertices like this, S. It's a sort of uh, integer solution. And uh, this is sort of where the name rounding comes from. It's kind of like I took this uh, X tilde and I literally rounded it, you know, to the nearest integer. So everything that was at least a half, I round up to one. Everything that's below a half, I round down to zero. And I have zeros and ones. I think of this as an indicator of a subset S. Uh, okay, so uh, what's nice is the simple fact is that this S in this way is a feasible vertex cover. And I'll let you think about why, maybe for a moment. It's because of one of the constraints that you have in the LP, specifically the constraint that says for every edge uh, has to be sort of fractionally covered. So the endpoints of x tilde have to add up to at least one. So here's the reason, you know, x tilde is feasible. We know for every edge, x tilde's values on u and v have to add up to at least one. So if two numbers add up to at least one, then at least one of them has to be at least a half which means that S will contain at least one of U or V, possibly both. Um, so that's nice. Now, what about cost? Well, what's nice is when you do this idea, the cost of the set S you produce can be shown to be not much more, at most two times the cost or the value, if you will, of the fractional solution X tilde. So let's prove that. Well, what does it mean the LP cost of X tilde? It just means this, the sum over V of the cost of V times X tilde V. So this is a fraction. Now, uh, let's observe that this is, if I take this sum in, sum, and only include the terms V that are in S, uh, I can do that. And then whenever V is in S, its X tilde value is at least a half. So this whole sum is at least uh, the sum over V and S of CV times a half. Okay, and that's just a half times the sum over all V and S of CV. It's a half of this cost of this integral solution. And that's it. I mean, if I just put the two on the other side, I get that the cost of this integral solution S that you make is at most two times the sort of LP cost or LP value of S. And that's pretty cool. Uh, because as a corollary of this, um, we can just apply this to the optimal LP solution, which we can find efficiently with the linear programming algorithm. We find the optimal LP solution, let's call it X star. It's a feasible solution. So now an algorithm, an efficient algorithm can form this S uh, sub X star, and it's a feasible integer solution. And we've just shown that its cost will be at most two times the LP cost of X star. But X star is the minimum uh, solution, so this uh, cost solution. So this is just two times the LP optimum value. Um, and uh, remember, this is a, we're a minimization problem. So the LP optimum value is always less or equal to the optimum value. So this is at most two times the true optimum value. Uh, but on the other hand, if we go back to SX star, it is a feasible integral solution. It's a feasible vertex cover and it has some cost and this cost must be at least the optimum value. 
So what have we shown with this long sequence of inequations? We've shown that in polynomial time, you can get this Lx star by linear programming, convert it to a feasible solution, a feasible vertex cover S sub x star, whose cost is sandwiched between the true optimum and at most uh, two times the optimum. And that's pretty cool. It means you can efficiently find a vertex cover uh, S whose cost is within factor two of the optimal. It's at most two times the size of the optimal vertex cover. Okay, and this is called a two approximation algorithm. And it's pretty nice. And in fact, uh, this is the optimal polynomial time algorithm known where optimal refers to like how good a factor approximation you get. So it's not known in polynomial time how to get uh, vertex covers, which are guaranteed to always be, let's say at most 1.99 times the optimal solution. Okay, and this is like a cool way using linear programming that you can get like a factor two uh, solution. Um, yeah, and you may have seen a, a, a simpler combinatorial algorithm that achieves a two approximation for a vertex cover, uh, which works in the case where the costs are all the same, where you just count the number of vertices. Um, there, there's an easy algorithm where you just um, keep choosing edges that are uncovered and include into your vertex cover both endpoints. Uh, but that simple algorithm does not extend to this case where the vertices have costs. So for there, you really need kind of need this linear programming based algorithm. Okay, any questions? Okay, cool. Uh, let me make some final remarks if you can squint and see this stuff I crammed into the corner. There's another cool thing about this LP, which uh, we may not show. Well, we're not gonna show now, but we may see on the homework, as always. Um, this LP has a special property. It's not integral, but it's half integral. Um, every vertex X tilde for this LP happens to have the property um, that all its coordinates are either zero, half, or one. So it's not integral. I would say that all the coordinates are either zero or one, but it's half integral. It turns out they're all either zero, half, or one. And so this, uh, that's kind of cool. And so this, this uh, rounding technique of taking all the vertices whose uh, assignment is at least a half, turns out to just be taking all the vertices whose assignment is equal to a half or equal to one.